Today, we are talking about Trey Academy, specifically Trey Build Foundations. Here's the agenda for today. We're going to complete this little intro. We've got some resources on the screen for the next slide. We're going to answer a few questions for you. Who is Trey Academy for? How do you get access? What's covered in it? We're going to talk about credentials. Grant is going to take over and run us through a co-build, and we're going to actually complete a couple of the labs in the... Um, in the education course. And then we'll give a sneak peek on our trade build certification. And then we'll leave plenty of time at the end for Q&A. So if, um, if you need these afterwards, they'll be shared in the community and uh, in the follow-up, but we've got the, the Slack channel in our community, Trey Academy or Academy Help, hashtag Academy Help. We've got the website where you can register, website where you can access Trey Academy. And then we've also got the labs that need to be imported as a template. And we'll go through that later in the presentation towards the co-build section. So we have gone through a bit of a, a facelift on the website this week. If you haven't checked it out, this is a scroll through some of it. Um, one thing that's, that's really important to kind of level set on as we talk about some of the stuff today is there are three ways that you can interact with Trey as a person building automations or automating on Trey. So those three ways are using our build interface, using uh, code, or using the chat interface. Today's focus and the focus of our first two courses launched through Trey Academy are the build interface. Um, so that's if you're using this screen. When you are building workflows, you're in a project, your building workflows, this is the build experience and that's what we're focusing on. And that's what the content of the first two courses is centered around. So that answers a little bit who it's for. Let's get into more particulars. So new builders, we've got a bunch of people, as we said, um, that are in their first month building on tray, another person who's in their first th uh, three months building on tray. So this is definitely geared towards you. Um, regardless of what your technical ability is, um, you're going to find value in this. If you're more like myself on the less technical side, I'm not a developer, um, but I build automations. Or if you're a developer, uh, we've had people go through the program in the early access while we were testing it um, from both ends of that spectrum who are who are finding a lot of value in it because you get product familiarity. So for people who are developers, you're still going to learn a lot because um, you need to know how to apply these things to the tray context. And we do that in Academy. And then also um, for people who uh, maybe are already starting to figure out the product, we talk about a lot of automation concepts and these things can be applied widely, not just within Trey, but beyond um, and are really, really great like education, general um, conceptual knowledge. Whoops. Then we've got uh, an endorsement here from a software engineer that went through the program who was new to Trey. So wanted to make sure we gave a shout out to one of our finishers in the early access program. And for anybody else who's on the call, I saw a couple of people, including uh, Ben, shout out Ben, who's an experienced builder. This is still for you. Um, you can prove through these lessons, these labs, uh, the knowledge checks that you know all there is that is required to use this interface within Trey. It's possible to test out of the lesson so you can skim the content and then go complete the labs, complete the knowledge checks. And uh, we have two courses available as of Monday publicly. One is foundations, which is our focus today, but we wanted to call out that there's also practitioner, which goes much deeper um, on more complex concepts and is a bit more advanced. So for somebody who's been building for a while, we think there's still a lot of great content within that um, course that will be new to you. And it'll prepare you for a future certification. That's a bit of a lead on where we're going to go after the co-build today. Grant is going to give some information about that. Another shout out to a community member, Connor, who is an experienced builder and uh, gave us a big shout out to say that it was really helpful to still go through the education in the early access part of our rollout for this. So how do you get access to Trey Academy? Well, we've got this uh, landing page that we've We've got public now where you can, um, and Grant's going to go through this in real time in a few minutes, but you can enroll and access the page directly from that link. So uh, world's ugliest, but very effective slide. 
Also, we have our community wanted to give a call out to not necessarily how you access it um, is through the Academy channel, but this is a place where you can get access to help with Academy. So we have this channel available for our community of builders, and you can go there and ask questions or just get some advice on how to get through certain things. Also, we love feedback. So if you have feedback about your experience, what's working, what's not working, um, if something delighted you or if something frustrated you, you can let us know in this channel. And that's the best way for us to be able to help you and also implement change. A uh, little nugget there, which Grant will probably go through, but I just wanted to call it out very clearly on this slide as well as we have a way for you to also use the community to check your progress in, in Trey Academy. So you can just use the slash command um, and then you can see exactly which labs you have left to complete and which knowledge checks you have left to complete. I uh, wanted to make sure also for folks, because we have a lot of new folks on the call attending a workshop for the first time, we use the Q&A section for any questions or comments. So if you have anything up to this point, um, I want to make sure you know that you can throw any of your questions in there. And Jonathan, myself, or Grant are here able to uh, field those questions and, and answer live or in the chat. So feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A as we go along. So what's covered within Trey Academy? Well, to, available today, and as of this past Monday, we have these two courses. Uh, again, they're Trey Build Foundations and Trey Build Practitioner. Uh, why build? Because we're looking at the build interface. So there, these are focused on the build interface, and we go through um, some foundational knowledge and, and more advanced knowledge in the practitioner. And those are the estimates for the times that we've seen people come through the programs or through the courses. And I'm not going to read through all of these, but I wanted to give um, a quick look at some of the labs, the names of the labs and the quizzes and stuff that actually are used to evaluate you. So this is the foundation suite, uh, the foundations course. These are all the things that you'll need to pass in order to get your certificate of completion for this one. You can see we've got like a section on basic architecture, tray tools, um, some transformation stuff. And then in practitioner, there are are two sections and you can see we've got advanced data transformations we've got debugging architecture principles all that good stuff um, in practitioner two callable workflows universal connectivity these are really important concepts and we're really excited to have people um, be able to drive yourself through a self-paced education experience and get all this knowledge so that you can build better and we wanted to make sure that we highlighted kind of what's available, where things are going. So we've got the certification, more information coming on that after the co-build. And we've got some badges that we're trying to develop. So if you have suggestions on what we should build specific compartmentalized um, education experiences around, if there's a particular use case, connector, um, something that you think should be a badge, please give us feedback and let us know. We're also thinking about how we can build out the future of Trey Code Foundations and Trey Code badges, including stuff around the Connector Developer Kit that's coming out. So yeah, we're really excited about where this is headed. Credentials. So this is this is something that um, has gotten really great feedback from the people who have passed through the program so far. So you can, when you finish uh, one of the courses, so either Foundations or Practitioner or both, you'll get an email that looks just like this. This is a real email that I got. Um, and it allows you to save the PDF version of your credential if you'd like. And, um, the thing I'm really excited about for this is you can also add it to your LinkedIn profile. So you can see that Connor from our community posted about this, um, and was able to add it to his LinkedIn when he finished during early access. So this, he posted this on the first day as he had finished just a little bit earlier than that. Um, and you can share with your network to say like, you know, look, I'm a, I'm an automation professional. I'm learning about these things. I have these skills. And it ends up in your licenses and certifications area on your LinkedIn profile, which is really nice. Any questions or comments on anything we've covered thus far? I'll give it a second. All right, I'm not seeing anything pop up in the Q&A section. Just a reminder, that's where we're looking for any questions or comments. So I'm going to pass it over then to Grant, who is going to take us through um, and talk about 
a little bit of some of those things we kind of breeze through, but the UX and the actual experience of getting registered, getting onto the page, and then we're going to complete a couple of the labs together as well. So Grant, I will pass it over to you. All right. Thanks, Austin. I just want to confirm you can hear me okay? We can hear you. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, do you mind stopping your screen share? Perfect. And I will start mine. And just let me know if you can see my screen at the track homepage. All right, perfect. Yeah. Um, so while I do this, since we are doing a co-build, if those in attendance could just log into Trey if you haven't done that already into your personal workspace and just keep that aside until we're ready to go. Um, but this is the Trey Academy landing page. Um, and so what you can see here, we've got a lot of information about the benefits of Trey Academy and what it provides to you, the students. But really the two most important links are gonna be right at the top here. So this enroll link will take you to a registration form where you can sign up for the course. Um, spoiler, you've all been signed up because of uh, registering for this workshop. But if you have folks at your organization who are interested, you can send them to Trey Academy, tell them to click enroll, and then they'll come over to this enrollment form. So very basic, all we're asking for, first name, last name, your Trey account email, the company, and then whether or not you're a member of the Trey Slack community. If you are, you would just put in the email that you use to log into the Trey Slack community. And if you're not, you would leave this set as no. And really this last question is important because community is such a fundamental part of the educational experience. And as often alluded to in his slides, we have an Academy Help channel in community. So as soon as you enroll in education, you're gonna be automatically added to that channel so you can take advantage of all that it has to offer right away. Moving back to the landing page, there is this other link that's called Continue Learning. And if you click this, it will take you to the education site. Um, so if you're accessing this for the first time, like I am in this um, new browser profile, you may get a message like this where we need to have ad blockers disabled in order to use the website. Um, we use uBlock here, so I'm just going to quickly add this domain to the whitelist, apply the changes, and refresh the page, and then I won't see this message any longer. Um, again, if you do come, if somebody comes across this site and they have not registered, there is a link here at the bottom so that they can register. But what I'm going to do is just put in my email and password that I use, the password you will get in your email. And I will log in. So once you're logged into the Academy site, um, let's get a little bit of the lay of the land. Along the left-hand side of the screen on any page, you can see the individual learning paths. So a learning path would be foundations one, foundations two, foundations three, practitioner one and practitioner two. And then within each learning path, we have what we call core competencies. So if I expand anatomy of a workflow, for instance, this is a core competency and within it, there are lessons. We always have an introduction that introduces you to what you're going to learn in this competency. And then um, depending on the content, we may have a wrap up in a quiz, otherwise we might just have a wrap up. There's also a search bar at the top of every page that allows you to quickly find lessons and navigate to them. So this is helpful if you go through the program now um, and say down the road, you need a refresher on a specific concept, rather than trying to remember where it lies in the learning path, you can just go here, type it in the box and I'll, I'll do one as an example. And you can see we get the result here and you can click on that page and navigate right to it. Um, and then up in the upper right-hand corner, we have this community button that's gonna take you to our community landing page that I have here open in a new tab. So if you are not a member of the community, you can request access. If you are, you can open Slack here. And then there's also a link to 
the process for checking your progress. And Austin did show this in the slide. It is a slash command that you use within the Slack community. And if I switch over to Slack, um, this is the result that you get when you run the slash command. So you'll see your progress totaled at the learning path level. So you can see I've completed foundations one, two, three, and also all of practitioner one. But when it comes to practitioner two, I have some things that I have not yet completed. So anything that has been correctly completed, and I say correctly because um, I'm speaking to the lab or the quiz for that section, um, that will show a green check mark. But if you have not completed it or you did not complete it correctly, you'll see the red X. So this is just a quick check. You can run this as many times as you need to to see where you stand. And when you finish foundations one, two, and three, you'll get your foundation certificate. And then when you finish practitioner one and practitioner two, you'll get your practitioner certificate. Um, a couple of other kind of navigational things on the site. If you scroll down to the bottom, I know this button is faint in the lower left-hand corner. There is a log out button. If you would ever want to log out, you don't necessarily need to, but it's there. Um, there's this cool little toggle that'll change it between light and dark mode, which is fun if you're a fan of using dark mode during the day. Um, and then there's also a button to send us feedback. So what this will do is pop up a feedback form where you can type your name, email, um, the lessons that you're providing feedback on. And then uh, this will send an email to the education team that we can then take a look at and get in touch with you. So many different ways to give feedback on the course. Sending this feedback form through the site is just one of those. Um, right. Grant, we just have one question that popped up and uh, it was asking, is the slash command result visible to other users in the community? Uh, the answer to that is no. So it's going to be an ephemeral message that's sent just back to you. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yep. All right. Wonderful. Um, so just want to make sure that everybody has their instance of Trey open. Um, you've all been registered for Trey Academy, so you should have received the link to log into the site. If everybody wants to take a minute and do that now, once you're in, I will meet you at the, I don't remember which lesson it is, getting organized with projects. So it's under admin essentials and then getting organized with projects. And we're gonna jump around a little bit um, just for the sake of today's lesson, but feel free to go back and, and review some of these prior lessons on your own time. So when you're on a lesson, um, now you can see I've got a table of contents that appears on the right-hand side of the screen. And if I click any of these, it will just take me through to the different part, the different headings of that lesson. So in this lesson, we're talking about getting organized with projects. And what we do is we talk about how you can create a project within Trey how you can export a project and import a project, um, how projects appear in the builder, how you can put workflows in an existing project. And then the important thing for today is this interactive lab. So on any lesson that has an interactive lab, you'll see this section. And what it will do is walk you through the process of what you need to do to complete the lab. The reason why we're starting with this one is because we have a project that we put together that contains all of the lab workflows that you'll need to complete foundations and practitioner. So once everybody is on this screen, if I could ask you all to click the button to import the project from the templates page, that's going to take you to this link here in our documentation. This is Trey Academy Labs. And so what you'll do is import this project and then use the workflows in this project to complete Trey Academy. So if you're logged into Trey, you can click the use template in the upper right-hand corner of this page. 
And what this will do is take you directly into Trey. You can see this is grayed out, but I'm in my personal workspace, which is where you wanna be. I'm gonna rename this project to Trey Academy Labs, BW for Builder Workshop, and then today's date. And we don't need to put a description or tags for the sake of time. Uh, but then when we click use template, it is going to import that project and all of the corresponding workflows into my personal workspace. And if I go back to all of my projects, you can see they're sorted by the uh, last modified date, most recent being at the top, and here it is. So 43 workflows in total that you need to successfully configure to complete practitioner one or practitioner and foundations. All right, I will give it a brief pause um, just to make sure that people have adequate time to import this project. And while we're doing that, I'll go back to the site. And I'll just mention, I threw it in the chat. Uh, if anybody is having any issues, technical issues, getting either into Trey Academy or importing that project, feel free to throw a note in the Q&A. And Jonathan and I will try to help on the side while Grant keeps rolling. Perfect. Thank you both. Okay. So assuming everybody has imported their project, we are now going to go to the first lab that we're going to work on together, which is um, how to pass data between steps. And so this will be under workflow building basics. And it is the one, two, three, fourth one, fifth one from the bottom. Um, if you don't want to use this nav, you can also type it in the search box, as I mentioned earlier. And so this lesson, it talks about how you can pass data between steps and tray, um, a pretty foundational concept that I'm certain everybody on this call knows how to do, which is why we chose this for the lab. Really, what we want to do is get you acclimated to the process of using this project to be able to complete the education. So we'll go down to the interactive lab portion here. And you can see that it tells us exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to learn how to pass data between steps using the connector snake, interpolation, and through workflow metadata. An introduction like this exists at the top of every interactive lab. And then there's always a link to go back to the um, template page so that you can import that if for some reason you would need to import that for the first time. So the first step in the lab, it'll tell you which workflow you need to go to. So here we're within the workflow titled Interactive Lab, How to Map Data. And I'll put these two windows side by side just so it makes it a little bit easier for us to see. that this one over here all right so i've got the academy on the left and trey on the right so i'm looking for the workflow called how to map data and here it is and so this tells me in the workflow called how to map data we should see three data storage connectors noted as missing inputs storage one, storage two, and storage three, which are here. Then the lab will tell us exactly what we need to do. So we need to map the storage one value to the email from the test data step, map the storage two value to the full name using interpolation, and mapping storage three to the workflow title. Then it will tell us once we've done that configuration, we scroll down to the bottom and there's a step titled validate workflow. This is present on every workflow in the project. And what this is going to do is check and see if we configured the workflow correctly or not. So we'll add an authentication to this step and you would have to add this authentication for every workflow that you configure, but everything else is 
um, preset for you in the properties panel. So all you need to do is add your auth and run the workflow. And then we tell you after your auth is in place, run the workflow, as I just mentioned. Um, and if you need help, there is always a video that walks you through how to get the answer to the interactive lab. If you don't want to do this and instead would prefer to ask questions or maybe get help from other students, you can click here to go to the Academy Help channel in the community and you can ask your questions there. But we always give you the opportunity to watch the video and learn how to configure the step, uh, the lab based on the instructions. So again, I'll, I'll take a quick pause um, just to make sure that everybody has been able to import the project and they've gotten to the lab for how to map data. And if so, I'm gonna go ahead and maximize my tray window so we can work through this lab together. Um, if you're the type of person that maybe prefers to work off of one screen as opposed to two, you can find the instructions for each lab within the workflow description. Um, and for our new builders on the call, you can get to that by clicking the light bulb icon on this bar in the upper left-hand corner of the workflow canvas. It doesn't have the, you know, the full list of instructions like the site does, but it does tell you what you need to do. And there's also a link to um, setting up the triggering assessment authentication and also the solution video. So this is super helpful. Okay, so let's look at the steps in this workflow before we do any configuration. We have a manual trigger um, because we're gonna be triggering this ourselves. And then there is a test data step. So if we look at the description for this, it says that the step's gonna provide te test data that's used throughout the education. The contents might change for each lab, but we should never modify or remove it. So you're free to click into this step and look at the properties panel to see the data that's within. This is important as you go through more labs um, because you'll need to know what data is being passed to the other steps, but please do not modify this or else the lab will not work as expected. So you can see here we have a JSON object with a handful of properties and these properties correspond to what we need to configure in our lab. So looking over to our instructions, the first thing we need to do is map the storage one value to email from the test data step using the connector snake. So I'm in my storage one. You can see we have a key of email already set. The value is blank. So what we can do is click this circle, drag it to our test data step. And you can see here, I have a list of all of the properties in that test data object. We want to map email. So we'll click on email. And hopefully this is pretty straightforward for everybody that's on the call. Once that's done, the next thing we'll wanna do is map the storage to value to the full name. So first name, space, last name using interpolation. So there are a couple of different ways that we can interpolate. You can see I have full name here is my key. If I put my cursor in this box and I start to type first, you can see that I'm getting a dialog box that appears with result.firstName from my object helper step. So if I click this, that is one way to interpolate. If I take that out and I press um, the forward slash, backslash, the one next to the right shift key, um, you can see now I'm getting a menu of everything that I can map. So I can either scroll through this and find what I want, or I can start typing again first, and I get first name. So those are the first two. These are fairly recent changes to the way that you can uh, map data within Tray. Um, so for those who've been using Tray for a while, you may have caught these, you might not have, but just wanted to let you know that they are there. Um, and then for the legacy users, you can always interpolate using the 
uh, the original way, which is the open curly bracket followed by a dollar sign. And then you get the, the classic lookup and I can type first in here and you see I get first name. So we've got our first name, then I'm gonna put a base and I will do last name as well, this time using the last and I put last name. And then when I click away, you can see I have a value. So this is no longer missing an input. Then the final thing we need to do is set the workflow title. So we wanna map the storage three value to the workflow title using the workflow metadata. So here we've got a key of workflow title. And in our value, I'm gonna to start to type workflow and you can see under the environment variables, I've got a value for workflow title. So I'll pass that right in. So once you've configured those three steps based on the instructions, there are a couple of other steps in the workflow. Because they're data storage, we're setting the values so we need to get them down below. These don't need to be changed. As you can see, we have a description that says do not edit. And then we have our validate workflow step. So if you've attended a builder workshop in the past, you're gonna use the same authentication that you've used previously. So you should have one there already. If you are new to builder workshops, I'll quickly walk everybody through the process of how to create this authentication. So you should be on the authentication tab. If you're not, please go there. Then down at the bottom, you'll see a button that says create new authentication. We'll click this. It's gonna populate the authentication name. Now I already have an authentication for this service. So I'm gonna put BW and today's date just so I know why I created this, um, but it's totally okay to just leave it as the default because this is gonna be in your personal workspace. Once that's done, we'll go to the next step. And then you can see it's asking for an email. So this is gonna be the same email address that you've used to log into Trey that you use to register for the education site. Everything should be under the same email address. So I'm gonna type mine in and then I'll click create authentication. And once that's created, now you can see that authentication becomes available by default within the connector. Um, if you are somebody who has this authentication already from a previous session, you can search existing. So if I search for Trey Framing, you can see I've got a, a couple in here. And um, so I can just pick the one that I need. Um, and as I mentioned, in this validate workflow step, everything is pre-populated for you. So you don't need to adjust any of the inputs and you shouldn't, or else you're not going to get the, uh, the validation working correctly. Really the only thing you need to do here is configure your authentication. So once everything's in place, you can click run workflow. And we can go into the logs and see how we did. And so if you configured the lab correctly, you will get a green successful run. You'll also get an email indicating that you've um, successfully configured the lab. And you can always look at the log output for validate workflow. And if you expand this output, it'll say you've mastered this concept. It'll give the assessment number and the concept here. And I do see some folks coming in with successful responses, so that's awesome. I'm going to purposely uh, mess one of these up so it's incorrect so that you can see what an incorrect submission looks like so that you know what to look for as you're going through. So I've taken away the last name value from the set full name. And now if I go to the logs, you can see I've got a red failed step here. 
And if we look at validate workflow and look at the output, this is turned to red. And the message is, sorry, that's not quite right. Please try again. So the important thing here is that you are getting real-time feedback as you execute. So you have the ability to run the lab, check your result, and in a matter of seconds, see if you got it right or wrong, make any adjustments, and keep trying until you get it right. All right, Austin, I'll just give a quick pause. Um, I do see we've got the majority of the folks completing this. Um, any questions in the chat that we need to handle live or are we good to go on to the next one? No questions at this time, but uh, we did have some questions that we were answering live and getting that all handled, but it was about just getting logged in and stuff like that. So we can keep moving and encourage folks to ask questions as you need. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, so the next lab that we're going to do as a group is the text helper. So I'll move back to my academy screen here. Text helper is going to be found. Um, it's still in Foundations 2. We're going to go to the common helpers competency, and then you'll see text helper is right after the introduction. Again, you can also type in this box, text helper and click this link and it'll take you to the same page. So in these pages that talk about our common helpers, uh, the one thing I wanna call out is that we're not going through an exhaustive list of every single operation that exists. Really, it's the most frequently used and most common operations for a given connector um, because we feel that if you can master these operations and know how to use the properties panel inputs for them, that if you need to use another operation for that connector, you'll be able to visit our documentation, read that documentation, and then successfully use that operation. So we do have the, the caveat here that we're focusing on the five most popular uses of text helper, but if you want to see the full list of operations, you can click here to go right to the docs. So we will again just skip right to the interactive lab portion of this because I, I do feel that this concept um, should be pretty straightforward for most. And because we've hey, got Grant, right the, before we we jump into the lab, um, I was just thinking it might be interesting to point out what's below the lab in most lessons as well, in case people want links to other things. Yes, definitely. So let's skip past the lab. Um, there's always gonna be a references section at the very bottom, and I can get to this through the right-hand nav as well. So here we have relevant links. Um, it could be links to our documentation. It could be links to useful workflow snippets that were mentioned in the lesson that you can import into your instance of Trey. It could be other collateral like blog posts or maybe a, a previous builder workshop session that relates to the topic. Uh, but basically anything that we have that goes above and beyond what's taught in this lesson, you can find it in references. Awesome. And then Thanks. another way, to, yeah. Um, one other way to give feedback, which I missed earlier, is we have a, a more quick and dirty way here. So was the content in this module helpful? Um, no, kind of so-so and amazing. So you can click one of these three emojis and we will get you know kind of this very quick feedback to get a sense of how we're doing with presenting the concepts in this lesson that don't require you to fill out you know some detailed written feedback all right wonderful so again since we have the instructions in the lab we'll use those uh, but this time we're going to look for interactive lab text helper so I'll go back to my tray window. And because we're in a project, we can use the workflow tabs. So I'll click the plus sign here. And these are in alphabetical order. So I just need to scroll down until I find Interactive Lab Text Helper. And once I select it, we can open this. And now you don't have 
um, a test data step here, but you have these sample values instead. So really your key is look at what the lab is asking you to update, update only those steps and nothing else. So here we've got a manual trigger. We've got um, three sample values. So the first is a string. The second is a number. And the third one is um, another string. And then we've got our three text helper steps, which are what we need to update. So in this first text helper, what we wanna do is perform a base64 encode of sample value one, or decode rather, sample value one. So we will change the operation to base64 code. I'll drag my connector snake to value one. This should be decode. Right. Once we've got that done, then our second one will be change the type of sample value two to a string. If you remember, sample value one is set as a number, and you can you know this because if you click on the drop down here, the type is number uh, designated by the one two three. So we'll go into our second text helper, change the operation here to change type. We'll map to that value. And then the type in the drop down box will be string. And then last thing we need to do is lowercase sample value three. So we'll go into the third text helper, change our operation to lowercase. And I'll drag my connector snake to sample value three. And I misspoke. This is the last thing we're going to do. We want to concatenate the output of the three transformations that we just did into one string with a single space as the separator. So going into our text helper four, we're going to add the three values. So I've clicked this add to values three times. Concatenate is already set as the operation. So we'll take the first one, second one, and the third one. And then our separator will click into the text box and type one single space. And then since we created our authentication for the validation step in the prior workflow, we don't have to do it again. Just need to select it. So I'll pick it here from the menu and click out of the properties panel so everything saves and run my workflow. And you'll see I got a green result. And if I look at the labs, um, we got the success message here as well. Um, and the thing here is you can look at the input to this connector to see the data that we've passed. So if you think back to the data that was stored, our sample value one was this string that we needed to base64 decode. And so it was kind of like a, a secret decryptor message here. So this, translates to tray.io has more than. Then the second value is 700, which comes through here. And the third value was connectors allowing you to integrate your entire tech stack. This was in all caps, so we just lowercase this. All right, and looks like we've got some successful results coming in. Um, for folks who have already finished, we can go ahead and open the final lab, which will be date and time helpers. 
So I'm not going to navigate over to the docs page because I think we all know how to do that at this point. Um, so just click the plus at the um, in the project and go to date and time helpers. And I'll give it about 30 more seconds for folks to finish that last lab. And then we can start on date and time helpers. So again, remember you can get the instructions here by clicking the light bulb icon for workflow info. So in this workflow, um, we've got a manual trigger. We've got our test data step. And then we've got this daytime helper step that is not configured. We've got a loop, which we don't need to touch. Uh, we've got another daytime helper step that needs to be configured, uh, a get data storage value, and then a final daytime helper step that needs to be configured. So essentially what we're doing here is we have a loop. We're going to get the time when the loop starts, run through that loop. And if you click into the loop, you can see we've got our records mapped. There are 82 records in this object. So what we're gonna do is add the email from each of these records to a list, get the time when the loop ends, get that list of emails, and then get the time between start and end. So essentially, how long did it take for us to loop through the 82 items in that list, pull out the email, and throw it into this list of emails? So if we scroll up to our first daytime helper, you can see the instruction says, get the time when the loop begins processing records in the UTC time zone and the format that's listed here. So moving over to the properties panel, we have an operation that is called get current timestamp. We'll select that. We're given the UTC that we need to use, or the time zone that we need to use rather, which is UTC. And then if you go into format, this is going to be an existing format. So we'll select existing format. And then we can use the drop down to find the one that we want. And it's going to be the fifth one from the top. Then if we move on to the second daytime helper step, it's essentially the same thing. We're getting the time when the loop ends since we're now past the loop. So again, we can change this operation to get current timestamp. We can pick our time zone of UTC, pick this as existing format, and select the correct format. Now you might be wondering, well, why can't I just take this step, copy it, put it down here, and everything will work. And the reason is because it's the way the data is sent for validation. Data is mapped precisely to the step name, uh, which is why we say don't make any changes to the workflow, except for what we ask you to change. Otherwise the validation won't work correctly. All right, and then the last thing we wanna do is update the get time between start and end to get the time between the two stamp, the two timestamps that we configured above. So clicking into this step, we have a get time between operation and it has the start date and the end date. So we can drag the start date to the first date time helper, which is get time for loop start, drag the end date to the second one, which is get time for loop end. And that's all that we need to do. You'll pretty quickly see a pattern here where you, you know, you, you start to do this much, much faster. Um, you know, basically read the instructions, do what you need to do, go to the validation step, add your authentication, and then fire away and see what your result is. can see this one is running. Click into my validate workflow step. And again, we did configure this successfully. Um, if you look at the data that was sent to the connector, it's zero. And that's because there are zero seconds 
between this process. If you drill down to milliseconds, of course, you would get a precise answer, but zero seconds. And I am starting to see some successful responses come through, so that's great. Um, if you are new to Trey and you haven't quite dug into any of the topics that we've covered, don't worry, you can go back and do these labs and, and read the content at your leisure. Really what we wanted to do today is pick some labs that were in the, the early stages of Trey Academy and get you all acclimated to what's expected of you when you need to submit them. Um, Austin, there is one other thing I want to call out before we get into the, the certification and that's just quizzes. So if I'm back on Academy, if I go to the wrap up and quiz, you can see here, I've got a quiz embedded. What you'll wanna do is enter your email, the same one that you entered for the authentication, logged into the site, so on and so forth. You'll type it in here. You'll complete the quiz and submit. And then when you submit the quiz, you'll have the opportunity to view your responses. If you score less than 80%, you'll have to take the quiz again. So I'll just very quickly answer this quiz so you all can see. Um, I'll click view score. This will give me my score. So it tells me I got three out of six points. It tells me the ones that I got wrong and right. So since this is 50%, it's not a passing grade, I can click submit another response and do it again until I get an 80 or above. All right, so um, very quickly, just talking about certification. Austin had alluded to this earlier in the presentation. Um, so. We don't want you to be good at just using Trey. Really what we wanna do is support everybody on a journey to becoming an automation and integration expert. And so by earning a verifiable credential that we're offering in an area that has really become quite a, a hot skill, um, it helps you to showcase your ability to build on Trey, um, implement it at any organization, and also give you a crash course in computer science and integration knowledge along the way. So certainly a resume booster to complete the certification program when it does become available. In order to become certified, you would have to complete foundations and practitioner as we showed earlier. And then there will be two additional requirements. The first is a capstone project. So what we'll do is give you a real world business use case for which you would have to develop a series of workflows. How you configure the workflows to do the task is up to you, but we would give you certain guardrails that you have to stay in. So we would say, you know, for example, one workflow has to use a fire and wait for response callable. Another workflow has to use a fire um, and respond or fire and fire and forget, so on and so forth. Um, the other piece is going to be a certification exam. So this is going to be a multiple choice exam that tests your um, automation and tray product knowledge. It's multiple choice. Um, you'll be able to take this at your convenience, but completing foundations, practitioner, the capstone project and the certification exam will get you that tray build certification. Awesome. Thanks, Grant. I'm going to put up the wrap up poll here for folks. Please um, make sure you answer the questions in there to help us guide not only uh, understand how this session was for you, but also guiding future sessions. So that is up. While you're answering that, if you have any questions from the rest of the session or questions about the future of Trey Academy, uh, how you can get the rest of your team involved in Trey Academy, uh, how to get access to the community any of these things we're here to answer. Um, and we, yeah, we're excited to see how everybody learns and gets through these new courses. We love the content. We're really excited about being the first automation 
um, education experience that has labs, meaning you can actually go into a tool, prove that you've done the work, you know this um, this tool, you know how to how to implement these architectures. Once you've finished all this stuff and done the labs, it's really unique in the space, and we're really excited to bring it to to y'all. So, please let us know your feedback along the way, um, and we'll keep the Q and A open for a couple more minutes uh, to see if there's any questions. All right. Thank you very much for those of you who filled out the poll. Um, we're really excited about this and we can't wait to talk to you more in the community and help you get through these courses. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Great final question there at the buzzer. Um, sorry, I don't know who that is that asked that because it says anonymous question, but you can use the slash command in the community to uh, check your progress. So if you go into the community in any of the public channels, you can use slash educate or slash education um, and then type progress and it'll look up your user to check your progress. Okay, great. I see your thumbs up. Hope that helps. Have a wonderful day. Talk soon. See you in the community.